Hello, welcome. Today we are going to look at design of simply supported two-way spanning slab and it read a slab in an office building measuring 5 meter by 7.5 meter is simply supported at the edges with no provision to resist torsion at the corner or to hold the corners down. The slab is assumed initially to be 200 millimeter thick. The total dead load, including self weight, screed, finishes, partition, services, etc., is 6.2 kN per square meter. The imposed load is 2.5 kN per square meter. Design the slab taking the cover to reinforcement as 25 millimeter, grade 30 concrete, and grade 460 reinforcement. This is the diagram to show. The longer span is 7.5 meter and shorter span is 5 meter. Now we'll go to loading. Loading, we will look at uh, table 2.1 of PS8110, which says that ultimate loading N, we take the factor of safety 1.4 for dead and 1.6 for imposed load. Now from the equation, we find 1.4 times dead load is 6.2 and the post load is 2.5. We get a total of 12.68 kilonewton per square meter. From there, we'll go to bending moment or bending. We have to compute to determine whether it is a one way or two way spanning to confirm that is by taking the longer span divided by shorter span, which is uh, 7.5 divided by 5, giving us 1.5, which is less than 2. We say it's two-way spanning. Then we go to moment coefficients. Now, for the case of simply supported two-way spanning, we use table 3.13 of BS8110. So if no provision for torsion, we, we use table 3.13 of BS code. Now, using this particular, this particular ratio here, longer span of a shorter span of 1.5, we'll go to table 3.13 and obtain the moment coefficients along the shorter and longer span as shown. So we'll come here, the value is 1.5. So this is table 3.13. This is for simply supported slab panel. Now we have ratio L, Y over L, X, then coefficient along, short coefficient along, long span. So I'll move, this is 1.0 to 2.0. So I'll move to where I have 1.5. 1.5 meaning the coefficient along x will be 0 0.104 and coefficient along y will be 0 0.046. This is how we got this coefficient. Now, having a Total thickness H is 200 millimeter. Now we can take diameter of reinforcement, assume it is 10 millimeter, so that now we can compute the effective depth along the short and long span. For, for short span, you take total thickness minus cover to reinforcement minus bar diameter over two, which is 170 millimeter. But for the longer span, you take total thickness minus cover to reinforcement minus diameter of bars minus diameter of bar over two. The reason we have 10 in the longer span, we assume already we have a layer of reinforcement bars passing through it from the shorter span. So because of that, the effective depth is further reduced by the diameter of the bars. Now in design, we go to shorter span. Short span, now we'll co compute the moment in the short span. Moment will be equivalent to the coefficient in the shorter span moment coefficient, which we got 0 0.104, multiplied by n, this n, 12.68, multiplied by the Lx. Lx is the shorter span, which is 5 meter. So we get 32.97 kilonewton per meter. We move to compute k. We know k is equivalent to m over fcu bd squared, which is given by m. We substitute, we multiply by 10 power 6 to convert to newton millimeter. We divide by f. fcu, we are told strength of concrete is 30. b, we know is fixed 1000 millimeter. Our d in the short, uh, shorter span is 170 mil, uh, 
170 millimeter. So you get 0 0.038. It will be less than 0 0.156 so that we don't provide for compression still. Then you go to arm Z. We know it is D into that, but it will not be more than 0 0.95 D. So after computing, you find this value here will be more than 0 0.95 D. So we restrict Z to be 0 0.95 D, which we get 161.5. And then the area of steel, we know its moment divided by 0 0.95 strength of steel times arm, which is Z, which is 32.97 times 10 power 6 over 0 0.95 times 460 strength of steel times 161.5, the arm Z, which give us 467 millimeter squared per meter. Now from here, let's go to the table and obtain an area or alternatively we can test if this area meets the minimum requirement minimum requirement is 0.13 percent bh which is 260 millimeter squared per meter again is 467 millimeter square per meter so it is okay so we go to the table to look for an area that will satisfy 467 millimeter square per meter and also satisfy the maximum spacing of 3D, three times effective depth. Three times effective depth is three times 17510. So I'll go to the table to look for bar, bar, bars and the spacing, which will give an area satisfying this and that spacing. So I will come here. Now this is the table, we, we are using bar diameter of 10. So we'll come along the direction, you find like from here, from 525, 628 up to 1047, all of them will satisfy the area and spacing requirement. Now because 523 is somehow closer to the required area, you find the section might fail in in deflection criteria. So I will choose 10 bar diameter at a spacing of 125 millimeter, giving me an area of 628 millimeter squared per meter. Now I'll come here and take, say provide T10 at 125 center to center, giving me an area of 628 millimeter squared per meter. We had said it meet the minimum area, then the maximum spacing is respected, so it is okay. Now we go to longer span. Long span, we do the same moment in the long span is given by the coefficient in the longer span, 0 0.046, coefficient in the longer span multiplied by design load n times a shorter span squared. We compute k, which will be given by that. Now the only difference here is the value of moment at d here is 160. M here is 14.58. You compute Z, which will be restricted to 0 0.95 D. You get it is 152 millimeter. Then now we compute area of steel. Area of steel will be equivalent to moment over 0 0.95 FYZ, which is that you get 220 millimeter square per meter. But we know minimum area should be at least 0.13% BH, which is equivalent to 260. So you find the minimum area is greater than the calculated area. So you must provide, now when reading the table, you use the minimum area value. So we, we shall read a value that gave us 260 millimeter square per meter and not 220, because 220 is below the minimum permissible, minimum permitted. Now from the table, now we have to read and also maximum spacing is 3D, which is 480 millimeters. So we have to find an area, steel bus, which give an area more than 260 millimeters squared, but they should not be spaced eh? far apart than 480 millimeters. So let's go to our steel area. We move along 10 millimeter diameter. So we have 262. All, all of them, they meet the requirement because 262 is above 260. Now here we will adopt 262, an area of 262, meaning you provide 10 millimeter diameter bar at 300 center to center. That is why we say provide 
T10 at 300 center to center. That means an area of steel of 262 millimeter squared per meter. Now you find that uh, because 300 center to center, maximum is 480, spacing is respected. We go to deflection. Now, when we go to deflection, we only consider for simply supported two-way span, you only consider short span. Why? Because short span had the highest moment. From what you saw, the coefficient of moment along the short span is the highest. So it will have the highest moment. Moments is related to deflection. Now, we go to, we know basic span, basic span, uh, Effective depth ratio is uh, 20, that is table 9 of BSC 110, table 8 is 20. Now modification factor, we calculate the service stress, FS is 2FY, area required over 3 area provided. Now, which is equivalent to Area required was 467. That is shorter span. Area we calculated is area required. And then area provided is what we read from the table of 628. So you find it is 228 Newton per millimeter squared. Then we compute M over BD squared, which is M32. Now that is the moment in the shorter span also. 32.97 divided by BD squared you get 1.14 and then the modification factor is given by this particular formula. So you just substitute where we have FS, we put 228, where we have M over BD squared, we put 1.14. So this modification factor will give us a factor of 1.57. Now permissible or allowable span of a effective depth is normally given by modification factor 1.57. Sorry, this is 1.57 multiplied by 20 you get 31.3 that is permissible or allowable then actual span of effective depth now actual span you use the span which is 500 lx divided by effective depth in the shorter span is 170 you get 29.4 since 29.4 is less than allowable 31.3 we say it is a okay now we go to shear check shear check you check along the long span why because long span has a smaller effective depth meaning the shear stress will be the greatest because shear stress is given by shear force divided by bd so if d is less it means shear stress will be maximum and then in the longer span there's less steel area that is why we have to concentrate in terms of shear check we use the long Span. So maximum shear stress at support, we know it, if it's simply supported, we know it is WL over 2. But here our W is N, which is N over LX over 2, 12.68 times 2.5 over 2, the, the, over 2, which is, uh, yeah, because now 2.5, it's 5, 5 over 2, LX over 2, we get 31.7 kN. Now shear stress, we know stress is force over area, we take Shear force, which is 31.7, convert to Newton, we divide by B100 times D160, because you are dealing with the long span, D is 160, you get 0 0.2 Newton per millimeter squared. Now from table 3.8, so you find 100A, S over BD will give us 0 0.16, and we know that the shear stress of concrete, or what concrete can withstand, we can either obtain it from table, 3.8, but our our effective diameter D is not among the tabulated ones. So we compute using the formula 0 0.79, 100 AS over BD power third, 400 over D power quarter, FCU over 25 power third divided by the partial factor, which is 1.25. So if we compute, we find it is 0 0.9 Newton per millimeter squared. Now, since the concrete shear stress, what the concrete can withstand is more than the design shear stress, what it is subjected to, then we say the section is satisfactory in terms of shear. Thank you very much. Subscribe, like, and share my YouTube channel. Goodbye.